Welcome everyone to Pivotal Stats, where we talk about data analysis techniques, business intelligence platforms, and much, much more. So let's go. Hey everyone. So today we're gonna continue our DAX exploration, and we're gonna see a couple of more date time DAX functions which we can use in our daily uh, reporting or analysis purpose. Now the three DAX that we're gonna discuss today are date, date diff, and date value. Okay. And I'm going to show you how each one of them can be used in certain scenarios with examples. So we're going to start with date. Okay. So to give you a simple idea, what date does is it returns the specified date in a date time format. Okay. So let's see this with an example. I'm going to create a new measure here. And in this measure, I'm going to write date. Okay, and it's asking for three parameters, year, month, and day. So I'm gonna supply it with that exact thing. So 2023 year, month, let's say Feb, and day 15, okay? Now it has created a measure for me with this exact date, okay? So I'm gonna drag this measure onto my canvas, and I'm gonna drag it into a card. I'm gonna format it into a date format. Now, if you see, it's showing me the results as 15 Feb 2023. So what it did was it converted the numbers that are provided for each parameter and converted it into a date. But now when you think about it, how can this be useful? Because it's just a simple static date that you've created, right? So this can be useful when you use it in combination with a different column okay so let's see that with an example i'm going to go to my data view and instead of creating a measure now i'm going to create a new column okay so new column and within within this new column i'm going to use that same function but now i'm going to use that date function alongside the date column that i have in this table now the requirement here is i want the date to have the same year as this date column I want the month to have the same month as this date column, but the day should always be the first day. Okay. So I'm going to do what I'm going to do is date year for in the year parameter. I'm going to simply write year. Year is another function that you can use. And within that, I'm going to use this pizza sales date column. Okay. In the month parameter, again, I'm going to use a function called month. And within that month function, I'm going to use the same pizza sales date column and then day parameter i'm just gonna say one okay because i want the first of every date that i have in this column and i'm gonna press enter so and i'm gonna format this into a date again so if you see what i've done is i've successfully created a dynamic column which will always give me first of the date first of the month of whatever date you have in this column so depending on the year and the month that it has it will always use that year and month but along with that is gonna change the date to first cool right coming to the second dax date diff okay now i'm gonna create another column here new column okay now what date diff does is it returns the number of interval boundaries between two dates. Basically it returns the difference between two dates and it also has the option to take a interval parameter. Okay. So I'm going to show you how. So in this, what I want is I want to calculate the difference between these two dates. Okay. So I'm going to use date diff. The first date is the starting point. Um, so I'm going to use this column. So pizza sales column. The second parameter is the end date. So we're going to use the date column here. So pizza sales date column and the interval. Now you can provide whether you want the interval to be in days, hours or minutes, right? Or even months, quarters, seconds, year as well, right? So in this case, let's take it in hours because the difference between these dates are not that great. So I'm going to use hours here and press enter. Now, if you see 
I know that these two dates are the same. So zero hours difference. But if you calculate the difference between these two dates, it's exactly 24 hours apart. And similarly, similarly, we have the uh, respective hours for each date calculating the difference. I can also change this to day to check how many days difference is there between those two dates and it's showing me the correct results here, right? All right, perfect. So now coming to the third and the final DAX, which is date value. Now what date value does is it converts a date in the form of text to a date in date time format. Now you might be thinking that, you know, we can do this even by using the date function that we learned um, just before this. So let's understand with a different data set here. So I've imported a small data set which has three columns in it, day, month and year, okay. And each one of them is in a different format. So first one is a whole number, second one is a text, third one is again a whole number, okay. Now, if I try to use the date DAX here, so let me just create a new column and I'm gonna use date and supply the year as in the parameters, the first parameter is year obviously, so I'm gonna supply it with year. Second parameter is month, I'm gonna supply it as month and third parameter is day. And if I try to create this, it will give me an error because date function cannot convert this text into a integer automatically, okay? So instead what we'll do is we'll use the date value function. And for the date text, we need to first ensure that all the texts are compiled together so that it kinds of looks like a date column, okay? So what we'll do is we'll compile it. So to compile, you know, you must have seen my earlier video where we talked about operators and to concatenate. So to compile these three columns together, we will use the concatenate operator, which is ampersand, okay? So this is how we will concatenate all three columns. So to create a date kind of text, what we'll do is we'll use the first column as day. So sheet one dot day and ampersand sign and a forward slash, okay? Similar to what we have in day, dates. Then again, an ampersand sign and we're gonna use the month. Again, an ampersand sign in double quotes, forward slash ampersand and then we're gonna use final column year, okay? And press enter. Now, if you see this text has been automatically converted into a date column now. So we can now consider this as a date and format it accordingly. Cool, right? So that is it. I hope this was helpful. Uh, we're gonna continue this topic for a couple of more videos because I want to cover a couple of more DAX function within date time functions. And once we are done with date time function, we will start with a different type of function, which is aggregation function. And following that we'll cover logical functions. Okay, so stay tuned and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.